Greetings, unsettled souls. Go! Welcome to the correct views. And uh, <clears throat> the intro to this may take a moment. And if you are new to the show, you're going to want to hear this. To longtime listeners, this is important. This is very important. This is the show that you almost got. Give me one minute. Danger. The emergency destruct system is now activated. The ship will detonate in T minus 10 minutes. The option to override automatic detonation. I was then going to allow that alarm to continue playing. And I was going to mix into the very end where our heroine in the movie. Cannot shut off the self-destruct mechanism. What am I talking about? Friends, <clears throat> I was about to tell you that the show was done. And I'm not afraid to say I've prayed about it. I said, God, Jesus, what do you want me to do here? And uh, something interesting happened. Something very interesting happened. And cooling unit was turned back on. For those of you that have not seen the movie and don't know what I'm talking about, um, it's from the movie Alien. There comes a time when you can't shut the cooling unit off and the ship blows up. I was about to blow the ship up, friends. So, uh, something happened. Two things happened, actually. Town.news only a few uh, close friends knew that this show was about to end. It had uh, it existed for ten years, uh, and it was about to end. It was about done. No one knew that. Town dot news reached out to me out of nowhere and requested that I start writing on the page. I thought that that was humorous, that was interesting, but that did not address the problems, which I'm going to get into here in a minute, concisely and quickly. This is sort of a show relaunch, if you will. That didn't address the video problem. And uh, by the video problem, I mean that I had 10,500 people watching the Washington, D.C. coverage. I need you to take a look at something real quick. Facebook took down the page. <clears throat> 19 hits, 18 hits, 14 hits, 42 hits. Um, you scroll a week after, we were just destroyed. Destroyed. So, I'm not crazy enough to talk to myself. The show had been around for 10 years. So let me quickly catch everybody up to date because that second phone call means that a lot of people right now are hearing me for the first time. Welcome aboard. You're the unsettled souls. That's what I call my listeners. Welcome aboard. Um, welcome aboard the ship that I didn't blow up. Um, here's what happened. The show was launched 10 years ago. Uh, the news cycle in general had been bothering me. And I knew that I had a knack for this kind of communication. I, I knew that I was good at it. So I had debated starting it. And the name originally before the correct views, I was kicking around the average man, which Christelle, the behind-the-scenes queen who was with the show up until about four years ago, uh, she hated that name, thankfully. And when I thought up the correct views, she liked it. We started it. We went, so what are we going to do? So we go to Bilderberg to make a movie. We meet Alex Jones and Mark Dice and Luke Radowski and all these people are just in our movie. And we come out of nowhere. We drop this movie. 
uh, things progressed, uh, songs were made, parodies were made, <laughs> different stoner characters were done. It blew up. Okay. It, everything went crazy. And soon shadow banning started on YouTube. This was around the time that we were really starting to blow up around after the, the, the uh, two documentaries, the one that was made in Chicago and the Bilderberg. These are all on uh, The Correct Views, uh, youtube.com slash The Correct Views. For the last 10 years, I'm not going to go over what it is the show does. There's 10 years of videos on youtube.com slash The Correct Views that show what, what, what I've done here. So I'm not going to bore anybody with that. But the shadow banning on YouTube, it used to be that YouTube, you could share your links as replies and comments to other people and it was a free flow of information based on traffic and legitimate clicks. That changed and it became where people like myself who were telling the truth were actually being relegated to the shadows while those who were very nefarious in nature had taken to being the only ones that or could post anything. And whatever they said was infallible, even if uh, the correct views, if you will, was something different. So when the shadow banning and limitations on YouTube grew, the show jumped to Facebook. And for a while, blurb is the word was going on. And it had a really big following. Uh, Christelle left about four years ago. Devastated. Uh, those of you hoping for, ooh, what happened? You're not going to get it. That's not what we do here. Find a different channel. However, it was devastating. The show, the way it looked, the way it felt like it interacted with other people was a conduit based on things that require two people. And they have to be very talented people. And she was very, very, very talented. The sound effects, what was needed to do the characters, I did away with all of that and went straight to the format that you're seeing now. And then the around this time, the conservative Daily Post, where I was writing full time, right before the elections in 2018, um, Facebook shut down the page. Now, they employed 20 writers full time. I was making full-time income. It was a very great income as a writer. And Facebook made it so that we didn't show up on anybody's feeds anymore. Even though the Conservative Daily Post and Teddy Stick and those with Argus Media spent a massive amount of money in order to advertise on there. And somehow, you know, you can steal money in advertisement and absolutely nothing happens to you. And uh, people lost their jobs over it. Then Facebook shut the show down in January after the Washington, D.C. coverage. This was done even after the authorities had spoken to me. And I said, you know, I was not nefarious. I did not break into anything. I was pushed into a building. I didn't have most of my footage because it was on YouTube. Uh, excuse me, Facebook streamed live. I showed them where the videos were on YouTube. Um, I explained the silly characters to them, whatever, whatever, whatever. And still, somehow, Facebook shut me down. That did me. And you, you can't have 10,500 people watching one day and then suddenly your site's gone. You can't recover from that. And uh, unfortunately, I... Didn't do all that great of a job of recovering that. Now, there is a gap. There, there's many things like that that uh, curators and creators like myself have done. But I wasn't that huge with the show that we could recover from that. I say we, me. We could recover from that. It was almost impossible. So, with that... I showed you what the views were. With all of that going on, I had decided that it was, the show had reached 10 years. It achieved a lot. I mean, if I was to break down all of the highlights that took place in the 10 years, particularly the first seven, uh, staggering. 
the last year for the election, the Trump train, the, the, the trips to Harrisburg, the two trips to D.C. You insane. It really, really was magical, and it was taken from me. Then, the cooling unit was turned on out of nowhere from the Media Speaks. The Media Speaks used to be a, a, a team made up of four of us, and I'm the only one that still posts, I believe, ever. And I was using it as a backup site in case the correct fuse got shut down. Guess who they wanted? I mean, those videos were getting 3, 4, 8, 15 hits at the most. Some of them, I think, had no hits. It was never promoted. It was sat there as a backup site. Guess what? All right, friends, I'll tell you what. I'll do it. I'll do it. Things have, on a personal level, been extremely... Um, cumbersome for me and I, you know you want me to be done I'll, I'll be done I was gonna I was gonna fold it up but if I'm gonna do something I'm going to do it right here's what I'm gonna need from you the unsettled souls are you unsettled about something post about it share my videos if you don't like my videos make better videos. I don't need you to watch this and say, yeah, he's right, that's cool. Or, oh, that was cool the way he used Alien to describe his point about shutting the show down due to lack of traffic. That's great. I need you to share. I need you to subscribe. Yes, you're welcome to throw money at me. The correct views on Hotmail.com through PayPal. I, I try to use it towards making a better show. The show has a bit of income and the hope is to grow it with opera opera news shut the cooling unit off and they wanted yours truly so okay i'm honored i'm humbled yes god i hear you now i'm, I'm again i'm not going to continue it i'll bow Tell Mother to blow the ship up again if I'm getting five people watching it. Not that I don't care about the five people watching it, but there are ways that I can do... I can reach more people walking down the street with a sign. Okay. If you're going to do this with me, then I'll do it. I will... You know, I have ten years to prove what I do. I don't need to sell that. But what I need to do is sell the idea that you need to hit share, you need to hit subscribe, and by all means, you better really support Opera News. Okay, they're, they're, they're doing this, so it's sort of a show relaunch, if you will, after 10 years, but I, there's going to be a lot of people, I think, coming in who, uh, who have not seen this before. And again, the show is what it is. Uh, I'm not here, I, like you, I, I've got uh, marks from, you know, the sun and giving me speckles. I, didn't, I don't put makeup on to cover them. Maybe I will someday. I don't, uh, because the lights are terrible. I don't, I uh, particular. I don't come up in suits. You know, I, I, you know, this show is for people who are looking for substance over fluff. Yes, I can take forever and put a suit on. And yeah, guess what? You're going to get a lot less news that way. Because I read hundreds of articles a week to do this. And I do have... A bit of flexibility in my schedule right now. A lot of the things I do uh, are scattered. I don't work for any one person. A lot of what I do is I work for me. So if the show grows and I can put more time to it, you'll see a lot more of them. I know I was talking to the people who were interested in me from Opera News. And uh, they liked some of the larger scoped ideas, which I'm not even going to go into right now. But... They like some of those ideas. So the sky's sort of the limit. That they're, they're behind the ideas that are being generated here. They're looking to grow. And I'd love to help them. They, they want me on board. You guys want me? Listen, you want me? Then I'm fine. I'll do it. Uh, but again, I, I'm not going to do it if I'm talking to myself in an empty room. I'm, I'm just not doing it. I'm crazy, but I'm, I'm not that crazy. Also, there may be someone... <laughs> 
uh, also posting, who has been a huge help to the show, particularly on some of the Trump train travels, uh, somebody who is a, a brilliant mind. A simply a brilliant mind, and this person may also be posting on here from time to time. And we're going to see where this leads, okay? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to give everyone a taste of what the show does. <clears throat> I'm going to cover one topic real quick, and uh, I had mentioned that a lot of the things I cover are open to being shadow banned or silenced or hushed. And I was told that's, that's not what Opera News does. <clears throat> uh, you know, it you know, I hate this guy. I mean, that's fine. You say whatever you want to, but you know, as long as, long as I'm not out there, you know, you're obviously breaking laws, the proverbial hollering fire in a crowded theater, that's a no-no. But in terms of discussion, we are allowed to discuss things which the major media does not want you to talk about. Okay, fine. If you guys are going to stand behind me, then we're going to talk about some stuff. Now, before I get into this, I want to say one thing. I am not telling you to get the vaccine or not to get the vaccine. Quick story. A friend of mine is in Noyce in California. And she is taking care of someone very close to her who had a lung transplant and they are elderly. I really miss my mom and dad. So there's a better than average chance that I might go ahead and risk the jab if I was in her shoes. Now let's apply this to my life. My mom and dad both died at 69. My dad was two years older. Heart trouble was on both sides of the family. My mom didn't have a bad heart, but her side of the family did, and my dad's side. God, blessings, I am probably older than you think I am, and I am not on any drugs. Like the pharmaceuticals, the big, uh, I'm none of it. I take supplements every day. You can uh, look up on uh, how to almost never get sick, youtube.com slash the correct views. You can see what I take every day. I take a handful of supplements. Echinacea, cinnamon, vitamin C, iron, vitamin D, very important for COVID. Um, I'm not on anything. So why <clears throat> would I risk a drug, a vaccine? Why would I risk this? Knowing full well that there is what is a small, and I admit maybe small chance that this could damage my heart. When my family has a history of a heart disease, and I thank God do not. What? Why would I do that? Now, some will say, yeah, but what if you get COVID? Okay, let's take a look at that. I have not been in lockdown. What did he just say? I have not been in lockdown. I was a DJ and a journalist and a real estate photographer when COVID-19 came crumbling down. I briefly did some grunt work after the clubs shut down. <clears throat> and I found out that I have absolutely no aptitude whatsoever for working on, like, mudding a house that... No aptitude whatsoever. I was the worst ever at it. I quickly borrowed my friend's car. God bless him. I love you, Dan and Trish. Borrowed my friend's car, applied for gig driving, and have been the one making sure that all the people locked down don't freaking starve to death. I'm the one who's been bringing them food. I also have been writing, uh, keeping my journalism active, <clears throat> which is good because now that shows are happening, I'm covering the Dead Daisy show on September 14th and the Judas Priest show on September 17th. Um, I did a remix for Dog Tablet, who's made up of members of Ken Lab, along with uh, Jay Crutch, who produced it. I stayed active, but 
I was in every restaurant, every food mall, food court, every eatery, every food truck from here to Budapest. <clears throat> I also delivered for Postmates before they went out of business. And I was dropping off pet supplies. I was in a million stores all the time. Prior to that, about two or three weeks before COVID was said to have actually hit, maybe a month before, me and a bartender <clears throat> where I worked in North Canton became horribly ill, which almost never happens to me. I used to horribly ill. I was off three days, and I asked for the fourth day not to go in so that I could recover, and Jay Crutch, who I just talked about, DJ'd my night. The bartender was sick. It was a two-story club. The DJ booth where I was at was on the second floor, <clears throat> and the uh, the bar was on the first. She got everybody on the first floor sick and up in the office where I was, and every girl that came in, everybody came to ask for a song, came, bam, I got them sick. Talk into the microphone, next DJ comes in the next day, he's definitely sick. They have since found out largely due to uh, the travel from, we believe, the uh, the Cleveland Hopkins Airport. Uh, Ebola came through here when that scare was going on. I think something through Altman Hospital. Somebody ended up at the club I worked at that was on the flight or something. I don't know the specifics for sure. But I know I was right around me as soon as it hit. The same thing happened with COVID. And I remember reading about it, and they said it wasn't here yet. And I was sure that I had had it. I was positive that I had had it. My duplex neighbor, he knew for sure he had it. Right? He knew he had it. <clears throat> but there are only two outcomes here now. Stay with me. There's two outcomes. You can either believe that I'm lucky enough to be one of those people who are immune to COVID-19. And believe it or not, there's people who are immune to, I think, virtually every virus there is. There's probably exceptions. But... Some people are just naturally immune. I suspect that I am to chickenpox. <clears throat> I've never had it. And probably if I get it now, it would be atrocious. But I've never had it. I've been around people that have had it. My brother had it growing up. I didn't get it. I also didn't try to get it. I have no desire to get a disease. Thank you very much. But I, I it was in the same house we were growing up. I, I didn't get it. I'm not saying I'm immune to it, but I'm saying it happened. Do you think that's the case with COVID? Particularly with the story I just told you with chickenpox? Probably not. I'm probably not immune to COVID. So, that means that I have either done thousands of deliveries. I drove my car from a year ago last May, 143,000 miles to 195,000 miles. I have been everywhere. I didn't catch it. That doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense that I wouldn't have caught it. And it doesn't make any sense to assume that I'm naturally immune. So why would I get the vaccine? Why? Why? What possible reason would I have to get the vaccine? Well, Sarah, there's only a one in a hundred chance that you're going to get something with your heart. That's probably one in 200,000 million, even. Okay, one in a million. Why? Why? I've already had it. And if I have it, by, which I've already explained to you, takes a huge leap of faith to believe. If I haven't had it, then whatever I'm doing must be working. Why would I alter it? There's no reason for some people to get the vaccine. Now, I'm not a, as Sean Hannity says this too, I'm not, I'm not a doctor. <clears throat> but I know that there are risks in it. And some people aren't sure about certain things. So one of them is the fact, and we'll get to it, this quote here in a minute, the... Um, there's some debate as to whether or not spike proteins can move throughout the body. Now, you can look this up. There are autopsies that sh from people who have died after getting the COVID vaccine, either from COVID or from something else. 
And in both instances, <clears throat> they found these spike proteins from the vaccine in parts of the body to where it was not supposed to be. One, I, one study said they found spike proteins in every organ of the body. Okay, let's say that they're incorrect. Well, they're, inco they're doctors, they're, but well, let's say they're incorrect by a factor of 75% wrong. All right. Then a quarter of your organs have spike proteins which shouldn't be there. Now, the fact checkers and the people that are going to want to shut this video down are going to say that I'm not allowed to say that because as we're going to cover here, other doctors say that these spike, teens do not, these spike proteins do not move from the area to which they are injected. Now, pray tell, why are we shutting people down for talking about the fact that two different sets of doctors have come to two different conclusions regarding the jab. It's not odd. Do you know, if you're going in for some major procedure, it's very common to seek a second opinion. Why do you think that that is done? Because some doctors come to conclusions based on studies, which are different from the conclusions that other people draw on studies. And in some instances, that is due to the individual makeup of each patient. <clears throat> Rewind that, listen to it again, it'll help you immensely.